these are two things that actually come up pretty commonly in in the church. So some people believe in partial inspiration of the scriptures. Okay? So they claim that since humans wrote the Bible and humans make mistakes, then that means the writing of the Bible could contain mistakes. This is a, a very popular argument out there these days. So they believe that we have to decide for ourselves what is inspired, what is of God, and what is not. It's a dangerous place. It's a dangerous place to be. The primary problem with this is that it gives us the task of deciding what is from God and what is not from God. And I don't know about you guys, but that seems like a scary place to be. We need to we need to reject any sort of this view, any any um, talk of this ideology. We need to reject it because sinful men and women, even if we are saved, we are not within ourselves completely capable of deciding what is and what is not from God. And what this really boils down to is either we accept, like Paul said, that all of Scripture is inspired, all of Scripture is from God, or we reject it, right? I mean, it's, it's really that simple. Another mistaken view of inspiration is called mechanical dictation, okay? Mechanical dictation. So this view teaches that God took complete control of the men who wrote the scriptures and used them like pens to write the scriptures word for word. He just, basically the Holy Spirit possessed them, okay? Um, if this were true, I, I will say this, if this were true, the style of all the books would be the same, right? It would be the same. It would just be a constant flow, a constant thought, all the same. Uh, the fact is, it is not the same. And if you've read the Bible uh, through Genesis, through Revelation, you know the books are very different from each other, right? Each book of the Bible is different. Um, so although the Holy Spirit gave the message, the individual writers used their own vocabularies and their different personalities are clearly seen in their writings. Paul, for instance, has a different way of writing than James does. Jeremiah, who was a prophet, writes differently than Isaiah, who was a prophet. The Holy Spirit gave the message but the writers wrote it. This does not mean that each word is not inspired. On the contrary, Jesus told the disciples in John chapter 14, verse 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So in the process, the Holy Spirit helped the writers to choose the words. He inspired the writings. But he didn't just take control of their body and Paul's just sitting there. You know, you see this in, in some occultic practices today. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, where, like, they channel spirits and stuff, and they just start, like, writing out stuff. That's not what the Holy Spirit did. So this is what we mean by verbally inspired. The Holy Spirit inspired every word in the original writings. Jesus himself spoke of this when he showed the importance of every word. Truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until 
everything is accomplished. So the words are important. Why? Because God, through the Holy Spirit, inspired them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 32, Paul wrote, The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. So God does not simply take control of a prophet and force that person to speak specific words. Um, sometimes we see people, and we, we see this in the churches today some, they, they make the claim that when they're giving a word from the Lord, they'll, they'll say something like, the Holy Spirit got all over me and I just couldn't contain myself. I'm, I'm sure if you've been in church, especially a, a Pentecostal charismatic church, you, you've, you've seen that before. Now, a lot of times, this is an excuse for weird behavior. You know, a lot of times people want to get weird and so they say, well, I just couldn't contain myself. God works through the prophet by giving the prophet a message. The prophet then speaks or writes the message in their own way using their own word. Um, so I'll tell you this too. The, the prophet also has the choice not to say anything. Again, in, in 2 Peter 1.21, Peter stated that Prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit, right? The current of a river carries a boat downstream, but the person rowing the boat is able to control which part of the river the boat is carried on or whether to move to the bank and leave the river. Likewise, the Holy Spirit carried them, but the writers of scriptures used their minds, they used their abilities, they used who they were to communicate the message of God that the Holy Spirit gave them. And we may not be able to fully understand every way that God works in this or, or all the things that God does, but we can understand that the Holy Spirit didn't take control of them, didn't possess them, didn't do that where they just go blank and start writing. He guided them. He led them. He inspired them. So we can define inspiration as the manner in which God gave his message to the original writers of Scripture. The writers of Scripture were led by the Holy Spirit in order to write the message that God gave them. Again, now, they're not just writing whatever they thought sounded good, 